Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Team Gennady Golovkin at odds with promoter Lou DiBella over the mandatory Dervinchenko. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the super chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Big shout out to Lance Pugmire and the Los Angeles Times. There's quite the situation going on, a little conundrum, if you will. The title of the article, link is in the description, says, Arguments build over whether Gennady Golovkin has leeway to avoid mandatory opponent. So obviously that struck a chord and struck some interest. So I'm, I'm reading the article in his interviews, right? And the, the basic premise, I'm going to get to some quotes, is with Canelo withdrawing from the May 5th contest with Gennady Golovkin, Lou DiBella, who promotes Dervinchenko, who's Golovkin's mandatory, he's the IBF uh, mandatory, I believe, right? And Golovkin has all the belts except for the WBO. Dervinchenko is 12 and 0 with 10 KOs. He has some pretty good wins against Deshaun Johnson on PBC cards and whatnot. And the WBC, they're they're allowing leeway or saying because Canelo failed a drug test, we're not going to force Golovkin into a mandatory spot. So they're at odds with with Team Dervinchenko and Lou DiBella. So let's read some of the quotes. Luda Bella says a late withdrawal is not supposed to stop a mandatory from happening. I don't understand saying that extenuating circumstances allow something different. Is that extenuating case that he doesn't want to take the risk? Question mark. That's what it seems like to me. Right. And this is what the WBC's Mauricio Suleiman is saying. How can you penalize Gennady Golovkin when the fight has to happen within a month? You have to support your champion. It'd be so unfair to penalize him now when for reasons out of his control, his fight with Canelo Alvarez is off. We'll support him and allow him to proceed to Canelo. Right? And this is also what was stated. Golovkin has been training for more than a month to fight the toughest guy in the division in Canelo Alvarez, said Lou DiBella. What is wrong with switching to another conventional right-handed fighter who comes forward? How can he not be prepared for Sergei Dervinchenko? And our guy is in the gym and ready to fight. So I don't understand any argument against him. When a guy is sitting in a mandatory spot, he's not getting paid until the until he gets the title fight. And if Golovkin faces Canelo next, this decision could affect Dervinchenko for 18 months. So you can see what the issue is. Link in the description. Shout out to Los Angeles Time once again. And I got to side with Lou DiBella. Like, first of all, I'm looking at it. I understand boxing is a business and all that. But it sounds like what DiBella is saying is true. Dervinchenko is likely a bigger risk. He looks like a, a good-sized puncher. Um, he's in shape. And he's more of an unknown commodity. Gary Spike O'Sullivan is a guy who lost to Chris Eubank Jr., factually, right? He got stopped by him, and he also became Billy Joe Saunders' sparring partner after Billy Joe Saunders also beat him. So he's a guy with losses versus Dervinchenko is from Russia, and he's 12-0 with 10 knockouts. So he's on a pretty good tear. And he's beaten guys like Toriano Johnson, who was once Golovkin's mandatory. I think that's how he became the mandatory by knocking out Toriano Johnson. And then he beat Deshaun Flyboy Johnson, who was in Golovkin's camp for the Canelo last fight, right? And he's a guy who's played dual sports, um, MMA fighting as well as boxing. He just fought Peter Quillen not too long ago too. Peter Quillen, a big puncher, went the distance, but Dervinchenko knocked him out. These are all facts, people, right? And he's saying, what Lou DiBella is saying is like, it just sounds like you don't want to fight him. So you're using this. And, and like, like I said, it doesn't make sense for the simple fact is Dervinchenko is a better fight and it satisfies your mandatory. So why not get it out of the way? 
The only reason I can see is like what DeBell is saying is you don't want to get it out of the way because it's more of a difficult fight and you don't want that type of obstacle in front of you. You don't want to have to go through a tougher fight because you really intend on rematching Canelo whenever he's done serving his likely suspension and whenever he's cleared. So you don't want to go through a Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade. You don't want to go through Russia's Dervinchenko. You would rather go against Gary Spike O'Sullivan or Jaime Munguia, who look like day one. Jaime Munguia, I don't even know who he is, to be honest. So he looks, he's 21. He's unbeaten, good sized puncher, but he's a guy that came up from like 138 pounds, 140 pounds most of his career, right? Maybe 147. And now he's campaigning at middleweight, plus he's young and he doesn't have half of the experience or the resume of a Golovkin, amateur or a pro, right? That got rejected by Nevada State Athletic Commission. And now you're trying to go after Gary Spike O'Sullivan, who he's a come forward guy, but I mean, he had losses on his record so to me this this is crazy and I, I told you guys for this is what this is what is gonna show the truth with team Golovkin because the walls to me are closing in I get it the Canelo situation is not Golovkin's fault but you also have what happened to Mexican style and I do this for the fans and hey no guys Derevchenko is legit a better fight than Ireland's Gary Spike O'Sullivan Yes, Spike O'Sullivan's coming off the Antoine Douglas win, but is that really much better? Antoine Douglas had been knocked out before by Aventel Curtise. Is that really that much greater than beating just Sean Johnson or Toriano Johnson? You know what I'm saying? Not really. Plus, it would satisfy your mandatory. So I, I disagree with the WBC here. They're saying, hey, how you can how can you penalize Golovkin? It's not really penalizing him, it's just people want to see a good fight you know what i'm saying and it satisfies your mandatory regardless of anything else so it's, it's not him being penalized eventually he's going to have to fight his mandatories like jamal charlo or hugo centeno whoever wins that fight he's going to have to fight dervinchenko i mean he had no problem stepping up to fight dominic wade right he had no problem fighting a welterweight in kell brook right so all of a sudden why not fight this mandatory it's a better fight so I feel looted Bella and I'm, I'm, I respect the fact that he's pulling for his fighter and, and trying to wish the best. But like I said, the walls are closing in for Canelo. There's tough fights all around him. And see, this is the thing that I don't understand is for years, it looked like Golovkin wasn't going to be able to get some of the big fights that he wanted. Either Sergio Martinez or Cotto or Canelo at a point in time. And then now the playground's starting to fill out. So the bully has some actual competition. There's some new kids in the school that are about the, the bully size. And then now Jamal Charlo, oh, he hasn't done anything at middleweight. Why should we fight him? Or Dervinchenko, he, he needs to wait. We want to have a voluntary with a guy with two losses on his record, as opposed to satisfying a mandatory and fighting the unbeaten guy who looks like he has some knockout power. You know what I mean? I'm not saying he could beat Golovkin. I don't know, but I've seen him. I've checked out his fights on, um, PBC and whatnot and like I said it's a mandatory there was no problem fighting Dominique Wade when he was a mandatory so what's the deal here you know what I mean no problem fighting Willie Monroe he has six knockouts what's the what's the problem here so I don't agree with the WBC I don't think this is penalizing Golovkin I think fans are owed a good fight like no one could control what Canelo had in his body I get that nobody can account or control or have prevented that other than maybe Canelo's team you know what I mean? Their own negligence or maybe they were actually using something on purpose. But either way, no one could have foreseen that. But I, I still think the fans are still owed a good fight. Suleiman's talking about you have to support your champ. You can't penalize him for reasons out of his control. I don't see that being a, penalize, a penalization. People just want to see a good fight. I mean, you're if you're going to sell tickets to a fight, I mean, who, who wants to see a guy? I mean, truth be told, Golovkin has a lot of fights where everyone knew he was going to win. Willie Monroe, Adama, Gay Rosado coming up from 54. You know what I mean? Ishida coming up from 54, whose claim to fame was James Kirkland. So he has a lot of fights that are in this echelon. So I'm just wondering when Team Golovkin is going to take those same types of risks to be great. Like Lennox Lewis fought Vitaly Klitschko on late notice. Do your fact checks. Deontay Wilder took on an undefeated Gerald Washington. Undefeated Gerald Washington when 
Andrzej Wawowski or whatever, the Polish heavyweight, tested positive. Another guy that failed a drug test trying to get an unfair advantage on Deontay Wilder. You know what I mean? You look at Anthony Joshua over in the UK. He was supposed to fight Kubrat Pulev, and he took on a uh, squirrely and tricky Carlos Takam. Same kind of deal, a month time. Joshua didn't complain. He did it. You know what I'm saying? Because that was satisfying his mandatory. They just went from Kubrat Pulev. But Team Golovkin seems like they want to, they'd want. they rather fight Gary Spike O'Sullivan. And I, I think I speak on behalf of the fans from the comments that I've seen and myself personally. Not many people are really checking for that fight. Even though Devin Chaco is not a huge name, I think his style is an entertaining style. Plus, like I said, it satisfies the mandatory. So I, I really think Team Golovkin is making the wrong move if they fight Spike O'Sullivan rather than satisfying their mandatory. Just knock it out, get it out of the way. It's the guy, knockout artist, the same type of thing as Spike O'Sullivan. And if you compare um, KO percentage just off the top of my head, I would definitely say Dervinchenko probably has a higher KO ratio because he has 12 fights with 10 knockouts. You know what I mean? That's solid. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next video, is Ego signing off. Fight fans, make sure you copy your tickets to this year's Box Fan Expo. It's going down May 5th, 2018, only in Las Vegas. I'm going to be there. We got a ton of great boxers going to be there. You don't want to miss this. There is a link in the description so you can purchase your tickets right now. Hopefully, I see you guys there. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.